On the program, we'll be sharing with you the meeting of the NNPC at Nimasa. Both mishaps in our inland waterways seem to be getting worse. We will show you what Nimasa is doing while collaborating with other government agencies to stem the tide of these boat mishaps. And there is a special relationship between Nimasa and the Korean nation. What is it all about? Shipping development. Why, where, how, and all the questions will be answered today on the program Nimasa This Week. I welcome you and I'll ask you to please sit back, relax, and enjoy as we take you through the maritime sector this 30 minutes. Welcome. face of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. We are charting the direction for a maritime and regulating the industry for a better, bigger and more economically stable Nigeria. Evolved to serve you better. We are NIMASA. New face, rejuvenated service. NIMASA. Changing the tides in your favor. The management of NIMASA working with the NNPC have reached a conclusion and it is all about reviving the interagency committee that is responsible for working out the methods of operations when it comes to areas of general interest to the two government organs. Leading the team from the NNPC was the group general manager of crude oil marketing and the team from NIMASA was led by the DG NIMASA, Dr. Bashir Jamal. Just last month, the Director General of NIMASA, Dr. Bashir Jamo, embarked on a working visit to the Group Managing Director of the NNPC, Mele Kiari, at the NNPC Towers in Abuja. In what can be termed as a follow-up to that meeting, the newly appointed Group General Manager Crude Oil Marketing Division, NNPC, Sir Billy Okoye, led a team of senior officials of the NNPC to meet with NIMASA in Lagos. Clearly observing COVID-19 protocols, the meeting discussed issues such as the need to ensure that Nigeria benefits from the affreightment of Nigerian crude oil. The Nimasa DG says it is a surmountable challenge if the Nimasa and NMPC collaboration explores the possibility of cost insurance and freight trade terms. Most of the vessels that arrive in Nigeria, in terms of the revenue we collect, we don't delay them because of the nature of the operations and the nature of the revenue drivables that is such that the entire country rely heavily on that. So we cannot have to follow certain bureaucracy like that of uh, convention vessel we do receive. So they come and load and go. It is only through the NNPC that we do receive information on such vessels. The NMASA DG also revealed that the agency was working towards the implementation of a national maritime security strategy to improve security in Nigerian waters and reduce the costs of shipping. We have gone a long way in trying to propose solutions. Uh, the agency just established a unit called Maritime Intelligence uh, Unit and what they intend to do is to gather intelligence uh, information for the purpose of preventing attack of these vessels. The Maritime Intelligence Unit purpose is for them to be part and parcel of those communities' areas, studying what they are doing so that we can quickly uh, approach the Nigerian Navy to sweep into action by preventing the attack itself in a proactive way instead of reactive way. Under FOB trade terms, Nigeria has no reasonable control over the delivery of its crude oil as regards carriage, insurance and other ancillary services. But under the CIF arrangement, the country maintains ample control over the distribution of its oil, which can be leveraged to enhance the competitive advantage of indigenous operators. Dr. Jamo appealed for more local content in the transportation of the country's crude in line with the cabotage regime while calling for contribution from other members present. It will be a violation of the Cabotage Act if you have foreign flag vessels getting involved 
in cabotage trade. If countries around us can ensure that their cabotage services as it affects their, their own coastal waters, Nigeria should also be able to ensure we police that and NMPC should be seen to be a driver, being a very big institution in this matter. We have also observed that some of the information we receive from NMPC on crude lifting does not contain the Nigerian local agent. They appear some foreign agent which makes it difficult for us to identify the actual local agents that are handling such uh, tankers. The cabotage was for development of local capacity. But recently, each time the Navy accosted the vessel, they were sent to Nimasa, confirm this vessel, whether they even register. Some of them don't even come to Nimasa. They just get their contracts from abroad. They come, they go into our oil fields, and they, they already got a contract with NMPC, and they're going to work in. So with this, I think we should, NMPC should be able to drive this with the agency to build local capacity. We will go through whatever catalog of requests. Uh, where we can, within our own limited uh, jurisdiction, we will do justice to it. But where we need to cascade it to uh, our senior top management or other agencies, we will equally do so. While addressing the meeting, Okoya declared that Nimasa was a critical stakeholder in the business of crude oil sale. He said his goal was to get the two agencies of government interfacing more closely with each other to resolve challenges and ensure seamless movement of crude and petroleum products in the country. These activities cannot be done without the marine sector of the economy. So I found it appropriate to come to pay this cost visit to Nimasa regarding your importance, the importance that we attach to your activities. On behalf of the entire downstream and upstream of NMPC, I want to say a big thank you for your services. There is a new kid on the block of COMD who really wants the, the cooperation to continue who will appreciate the support and to also seek ways of um, mutual activities and support where we can come in and where you can come in. The Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Nimasa, has said that the agency is committed to the OGP, which is the Open Government Partnership Initiative of Service Compact Delivery Servicom of the Federal Government of Nigeria. The DG who stated this won the National Coordinator of Servicom, Mrs. Nena Akajemili, paid an advocacy visit to the head office of the agency in Lagos said Nimasa will continue to ensure collaboration and synergy with other relevant agencies in order to achieve the mandate of the agency as regards regulation of shipping in Nigeria. National Coordinator, you will recall that the last time you came here, you gave us a kind of uh, vivid way and manner of the implementation of our own charter. Through the implementation, we empowered our officers to be alert to their responsibilities in providing improved, efficient, timely, and transparent service delivery. During her presentation, Aka Jemili noted that she and her team are in Nimasa on an advocacy visit in order to intimate the agency on the Open Government Partnership Initiative recently signed into law by President Muhammad Buhari, thereby making Nigeria the 70th nation to sign into the OGP initiative. She stated that OGP stands on four principles, namely transparency, accountability, citizen participation, technology and innovation, all geared towards allowing for open government policies that will enhance information sharing among stakeholders, both locally and internationally. 
While congratulating the Nemasa DG and his team, she noted that the agency has always complied with the Servicom initiative, hence the reason for the advocacy visit. She charged the agency to be in the forefront of the OGP. It is one of the agencies selected for the pilot scheme of the initiative. We're driving improvements, services that touch the lives of Nigerians positively. And so we're going to be working with technical departments, the key operational departments of NIMASA um, and the Servicom team in NIMASA to come up with standards to come up with standards that would drive service improvement in NIMASA. And so a framework will be developed to measure and gather data around performance, around performance of this service data. So citizens will be given a lot of feedback on the quality of services they receive. So a lot of service experience, there'll be a lot of measurement, monitoring and reporting on the quality of services delivered to citizens. And so we can now have a lot of data speaking to issues of how well government is serving the people. I'm sure you're very aware of a lot of the fatal boat mishaps that have happened on Nigerian waters. It has been a very sad situation, and the DG Nimasa, Dr. Bashir Yusuf Jamo, has frowned upon the fact that uncertified, untrained skippers have been putting the lives of people at risk. They ignore safety measures, safety protocols, and other things. Now, the Accident and Investigation Unit of Nimasa has been upgraded. This will aid in the collaborative efforts ongoing between NIMASA and other government agencies to ensure our inland waterways are safe. Today, we'll be bringing you a special report on the operations of small crafts in our jetties. Accidents are part of life and they also occur in the maritime sector. To ensure that accidents are well investigated with the aim of preventing such occurrence in the future, the Merchant Shipping Act provides for NIMASA to investigate and inquire into shipping casualties on Nigerian waters. Just recently, the Dr. Bashir Jamal-led management at NIMASA upgraded the operations of the Accident Investigation Unit. Mrs. Rita Igbuche is the director in charge of the unit. The unit is involved with ensuring that when accidents happen in our waters, we are notified and that the core function of ours is to investigate, find out the root causes of these accidents. The root causes could be mechanical failure, it could be human element, depending on. So the main unit, the main activity of the unit is to find out what exactly would have happened, what would have caused this accident and what, in what ways the accident would have been prevented. Aside of implementing international conventions on marine accidents on Nigerian territorial waters, the unit is also paying attention to accidents in inland waters. Considering the increasing rate of accidents involving non-convention boats on Nigerian inland waterways, the need for more attention cannot be overemphasized. Just take a look at operations at jetties on inland waters. This is Liverpool Jetty in Apapa in Lagos State and loading of passengers is ongoing. How much attention is paid to safety? How safe are these boats? Are the life jackets worn properly? We have life jacket, we give it to our passengers before boarding any of our boats and we make sure they are widely done before they board the boats. And we also have uh, navigational lights in terms of night journey on emergency. Although Lagos State Government says no night journey, so we are doing our best not to ply the waterways during the night. But it always comes on emergency. The safety measures in this boat are all intact. The life jacket and the, the fire extinguisher. You have the life ring and the and so many. Recently. 
News of both mishaps from Lagos to Benue and some unreported cases, mostly due to human error, have been reaching us. This is now a source of concern as agencies of government from federal to state now strategize and improve synergy to ensure safety standards are adhered to. The issue of safety on the waterways is of paramount importance, which I believe that uh, the government and the government agencies in charge of this uh, area of uh, transportation should look into critically so that we preserve lives, so that we preserve businesses, because these are budding businesses which, uh, which should provide us with a means of uh, revenue. So these are areas to look into and I plead that the government should take this uh, area into serious consideration as this is an economic benefit to the federal government. The agency has taken up a lot of responsibility. First of all, if I could recall, there was a meeting, I think early last month or two months, early last month, between the Lagos State uh, Water Authority, LASWA, and the agency because of this same incident of having a lot of accidents in the waters. So we had a meeting with them, and that the meeting was geared towards having an MOU, a workable MOU, with the stakeholders, where we also agreed that NIWA, Nigerian Inland Waterways Authority, will also be part of it, will get involved with us. And then it's just a way of uh, um, inter building interagency relationships so that we all can work for one main purpose, which is the safety of life at sea in our waters, within our waters. In order to curb the increasing rate of accidents on Nigerian inland waterways, all hands must be on deck. And the Massa Director General Dr. Bashir Jamo says interagency collaboration is the key to achieving the desired success. We have a number of uh, uh, boat drivers that they don't have training, they are not trained, they, don't, they are not knowledgeable enough, they don't have certifications, and they just know how to maneuver the boats and they decided to take uh, uh, boats and start to you know risk people life over the period of time. Our responsibility is to ensure that we monitor and supervise the staff that has been given responsibility to impose the issues of safety at sea. The life jacket, the, the, uh, the, the standard of the boats we are using, at the timing of use of boats it lies in the hands of enforcement officers. With the renewed collaboration, including NEMASA, NIWA, and state agencies like the Lagos State Waterways Authority, LASWA, it's clear that curbing the excesses of boat skippers, strict enforcement of regulatory instrument, and thus enhancing safety and security of inland water transportation is on the right path. One can only hope that members of the public will support government initiatives. <laughs> Do you know who a seafarer is? Seafarers are the people who make the world go round. <laughs> seafarers are people who have been employed to work on the ships. They ensure smooth sailing of the ship while making sure that goods and services get to us from every part of the world. And despite the COVID-19 pandemic, this set of people are still working for the benefit of everyone. Wow! Let us celebrate these special people as they are the people who truly make the world go round. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. Nigeria and South Korea have agreed to intensify their relationship, their collaboration in the area of trade and shipping development. This much was made known during a meeting between the DG Nemasa, Dr. Bashir Jamo, and the Consul General of South Korea to Nigeria, Kim Intak. Now, this relationship between Nigeria, the maritime relationship between Nigeria, has been on since the 1980s. But due to the economic dynamics of today, both countries have agreed that yes, it is time to intensify this particular relationship, take it a notch higher. Korea is a leading shipbuilder nation in the world, accounting for nearly 40% of global ship orders. Shipbuilding in Korea has been 
a linchpin of industrial development, national security, and source of employment and foreign exchange for the country. The big three Korean shipbuilding firms are Hyundai Heavy Industries, Samsung, and Daewoo, and they have become dominant firms in the global shipbuilding industry. Today, the shipbuilding industry directly employs approximately 200,000 workers in Korea. So when the Director General of NEMASA, Dr. Bashir Jamo, sits on the same table with the Consul General Embassy of the Republic of Korea in Nigeria, Kim in Taik, shipping development must be the issue of interest. We have been uh, together uh, on trade, power and energy. And my meeting with the Consular General, unfortunately, he's leaving. We discussed the issue, possible areas of uh, uh, you know, cooperations in terms of shipbuilding, ship repairs, and then uh, ship recycling. And he's been very fruitful. The Director General reiterated that shipping development was part of his administration's three point agenda, which also includes maritime safety and maritime security. In his own remarks, Intai described NEMASA as a very important organization, saying Korea is willing to develop a good relationship with the Nigerian maritime sector. NEMASA has also been put on the road in the, in the maintaining the, safe, the safety of the, uh, the maritime security. So the, many Korean people are Many Korean the seafarers, uh, uh, especially in the, the as threatened uh, the kidney. So in that uh, in that area, the Nigeria, the Masa can um, engage in actively and then can uh, provide some support for Korea. In Taik, who is nearing the end of his two-year tenure in Nigeria, thanked the Korean authorities for giving him the opportunity to serve in Nigeria. He called on the NEMASA Director General to extend the cooperation accorded him to his successor. You cannot talk about uh, our riverine domain, our maritime domain, in terms of security and uh, even in terms of uh, wealth creation without involving NEMASA. And I believe that uh, working with NEMASA, uh, we will be able to secure lives and properties in our maritime domain. Well, that was the governor of Bayelsa State when he paid a visit to the Nimasa headquarters. It was a beautiful visit because a lot of things were discussed. So much so, the DG Nimasa had tweeted this about that visit. And he said, I just finished hosting His Excellency, Governor Dwayi Diri of Bayelsa at our Lagos headquarters. Bayelsa is rich in maritime assets. We've committed to partner on multiple fronts wreck removal and ship recycling, fisheries, security, aga deep seaport, youth training. So you heard that? It was a good time. In case you're not yet following him, you could follow the DJ Nimasa on social media. He's at Jamo Bashir. Next week, we'll be bringing you more on that visit by the governor of Bayelsa State to the Nimasa headquarters. Till then, I'll say thank you very much for being a part of the program. I'll be back next week. But remember to follow Nimasa on all her social media platforms. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. They are all at Nimasa Official. At Nimasa Official. My name is Cordelia Obey.